makes sense to me that the, that the last modern revival before the rapture of the church would happen right here in the Bible Belt. And I don't see no reason in this world why it can't happen right here in Grenada, Mississippi. I think we're all looking for someone to come in to our towns and our lands and, and to bring about revival and bring about hope. But the hope starts right here with us. And you might notice I had chalk up here. Uh, Paul Gruber is a man who's traveled and, and, and he's, he's, uh, he's drawn a circle around himself and he's trying to, to let people know that revival starts right here in your heart with us. Today I was listening to the news and watching uh, on YouTube, and there was a guy on there that was trying to diversify this land, and he's supposed to be leading it. And, and I'm, I'm here to take a stand today and say, you know, there might be some diversity in this land, but I'm going to respect your culture, and I want you to respect mine, and we're all going to get along and, and get along with it. And get it too. And we're all going to uh, agree on one thing, and that's Jesus Christ. And we're, and we're not going to separate from that. And if we might have different opinions about things, different ways that we see the world, how, how it should be fit, the one thing that we, that we can all stand sure of is, is Jesus. I wanted to read a, a verse out of 12, uh, Matthew 12 and 25. It said, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to every one of them, Every kingdom divided amongst itself will be brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. That's right. That's right. How the government and how people is doing things these days is trying to divide this land. They're trying to divide people se racially and, and separate people. And by doing so, this nation will not stand. But if we all unite, Christians unite, all colors, all races, all kinds, we can reunite, unite, and pray for revival in this land. That's the only thing that's going to heal us. That's the only thing. With that, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, Paul Gruber, and let him tell his story about how he's been to town to town and how he's trying to provoke revival in this land. That we need it for peace, for unity, for this land to, to mature. That's, that's Paul Gruber, everybody. Hey, Paul Gruber. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who would ever thought when I was seven weeks ago when I started out on my flight that I'd end up in Grenada and have a, a parade like this with everything going on? <laughs> <laughs> Is God's timing perfect or what? Oh my God! I, I tell you what, I got goosebumps. Those are from the Holy Spirit. I like. I'm going to be up here. I was watching for guns and stuff like that. Yeah, me too. The Bible says if the Lord takes me home, then that's I'd be better off in, in His eyes than where I'm at right now. Anyway. So, um, before I get started, though, I, I want to read a scripture, but before I read a scripture, what I want to do is I want to say a prayer because I, I believe this word of God. So, dear Heavenly Father, I want to give you praise for the opportunity to be here in the town square of so much controversy that's going on, dear Lord, just proving again why we need revival. Dear God, I pray that the Holy Spirit fill me and that the words that come out of my mouth are yours, not mine, God, because I know... Without you, I'm nothing. I'm totally dead in this world, God. I give my life up to you right now in this town square of Grenada that your work will start today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 I'm getting up there in age, so i got to wear cheaters. So excuse me one second. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I'm not alone out there. But, uh, you know, this is the, the Old Testament. I'm going to read this, and I believe that the Word of God is true, whether it's the Old Testament or New Testament. Mm -hmm. And this is in 2 Chronicles 7.14. When I read this, it just touches me so much. When I first heard it, I thank you, Jesus. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive them of their sins and heal their land. Would you agree our land needs healing? Yes. That's why I'm here today, because when I first saw what was going on, you don't have to watch too much news to realize we need healing. Right. I don't even watch news. I got this thing called Facebook, and my friends tell me what I need to know. Yeah. And I see stuff like when I first took off on this trip seven weeks ago, I was down in South Carolina, and there was a thing called a tropical depression. They're kind of like hurricanes, big storms in Florida coming up my way. And... Uh, 
the house I was staying at, I didn't know about this, the house I was staying at, the lady said, you know, you got to stay here another day. She says, everyone stays here more than one day. I'm like, no, I got to get on the road. I says, I, I got a place to go. And uh, she says, no, everyone stays here another day. The refrigerator is full of food. Help yourself to all the food you want. That sounds good, but I got to go. She says, listen, you haven't even been downtown to Charleston, South Carolina, and seen the beautiful downtown we had. I said, let's see, one, two, three times. I'm like, that's the Holy Spirit talking. I better yeah. stay. So I said, okay, I'm staying. I'm going to go downtown. And I rode my bike downtown. I took, took uh, cameras. Now, my bike's not here. Paul's protecting it uh, <laughs> for whatever reason. But just proof that I did ride a bike. I'm a freak of nature now. I have this tan line. That I, I'm two different people in one, you know, and I can divide my body into parts. So I, I ride around downtown, and I stop at a coffee shop, and I'm looking on Facebook, and they're telling me all about this storm. Like, oh my gosh, if it wouldn't have been for me listening to the Holy Spirit, I've been on the road riding into a tropical depression now. I did stay there for a couple extra days, and I rode a little bit in that storm, and there's 60 mile an hour wind gusts in my face all day long. And it was dangerous, you know. I've ran into some amazing things through the protection of the Holy Spirit. I was in a construction site right after that. Plus, I had four hours of nonstop rain. I was in a construction site right after that, and they were building two brand new lanes of highway off to one side, and they had two lanes over here, and the trucks were doing like 15 miles an hour because they were slowing down and everything. And all of a sudden, a garbage truck just started coming right toward me. I'm like, he's not stopping. And I put my hand up like that, and by me touching that truck, it pushed my bike into the ditch. And then I looked at the brand new highway, it said road closed. I said, dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for what I'm about to do, but it didn't say close the bicycle. <laughs> I got on that brand new highway and rode for 10 miles, man. Asphalt all by myself. I'm riding down, waving to all the construction workers. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? So they didn't kick me off when it was good. You know, this is, this is what I believe that revival can start right here in this little town. This is the last day of my destination. I'm not riding anymore. God put it in my heart when I met with Paul. Then I'm not going to ride. I'm actually going to get on a bus and head back and start writing a book about this and going and speaking wherever God leads me. But I believe that with the people that are here, you guys can start reviving. All you need is a simple plan, and I want to leave that plan with you. And basically, it's three steps, and it's real easy to do. It says turn. Turn to God and pray with humble heart. To really humble your heart. Have a soft heart, because... You know, I, at one time in my life, I was a drug addict, alcoholic. I, I had a bad life. I, I shared earlier with Bob, and that could be in one of your Bob's, but I shared <laughs> earlier that I was like that story of Jonah where he's in the valley well for three days, but I was there for 30 years. And, you know, I, I was Christian at an early age, and then I went down the wrong path, and I got involved in drugs, and I got a number with the penitentiary system and everything. I had a hard heart, but it wasn't so hard that I didn't humble it to the Lord. And that's what they're talking about when you humble to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. It says pray with earnesty. That's right. Pray, pray yeah. for revival. Pray for a reverence of the community that the community will become revived and ask uh, to, to change. And then it says unite with fellow Christians. Like we're all... I pray that we're all Christians here. I believe you're here for a reason. If you're not a Christian, make sure you see one of us before it's over with because, you know, we can walk out of this park and the road can hit us and the marching band might come back. Who knows? We never know. When our time is up, our time is up. You know, somebody told me the Bible, the acronym of the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, stands for Book of Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Right here, man. Right here is the Book of Instructions Before Leaving Earth. If you're not saved now, I challenge you to be saved. You know, ask for the Lord for forgiveness. And get with other Christians. And they don't have to be at your same church. Right. I think there's people here from other churches. They could be anywhere. They could be in a place of business. Start a revival meeting where you work. Start a revival meeting where you, you attend. Start a revival meeting, coffee shop, the restaurant, wherever. Start talking with people about revival. You know, 